I was almost going to talk this lecture and not write and read it. Because all the lectures that I've written and read in America have been printed and although, possibly for you, they might even being read be as if they had not been printed, still there's something about what has been written, having been printed, which makes it no longer the property of the one who wrote it. And therefore there's no more reason why the writer should say it out loud than anybody else and therefore one does not. Therefore I was going to talk to you, but actually it is impossible to talk about masterpieces and what they are, because talking essentially has nothing to do with creation. I talk a lot. I like to talk and I talk even more than that I may say I talk most of the time and I listen a fair amount too. And as I've said, the essence of being a genius is to be able to talk and listen, to listen while talking and talk while listening. But uh, this is very important, very important indeed. Talking is nothing to do with creation. What are masterpieces and why, after all, are there so few of them? You may say, after all, there are a good many of them, but in any kind of proportion with everything that anybody who does anything is doing, there are really very few of them. All this summer I meditated and wrote about this subject and it finally came to be discussion of the relation of human nature and the human mind and identity. The thing one gradually comes to find out is that one has no identity. That is, when one is in the act of doing anything. Identity is recognition, you know, who you are, because you and others remember anything about yourself. But essentially, you're not that when you're doing anything. I am I because my little dog knows me, but creatively speaking, the little dog knowing that you are you and you're recognizing that he knows, that is what destroys creation. That is what makes school. Picasso once remarked, I do not care who it is that has or does influence me as long as it is not myself. It is very difficult, so difficult that it always has been difficult, but even more difficult now to know what is the relation of human nature to the human mind, because one has to know what is the relation of the act of creation to the subject the creator uses to create that thing. There is a great deal of nonsense talked about the subject of anything, after all, there is always the same subject. There are the things you see, the human beings and animal beings, and everybody you might say since the beginning of time knows practically commencing at the beginning and going to the end, everything about these things. After all, any woman in any village or man, either if you like, or even children know as much of human psychology as any writer that ever lived. After all, there are things you do know, each one in his or her way knows all of them. And it is not this knowledge that makes masterpieces. Not at all. Not at all. At all. Those who recognize masterpieces say that is the reason, but it's not. It is not the way Hamlet reacts to his father's ghost that makes the masterpiece. He might have reacted according to Shakespeare in a dozen other ways, and everybody would have been as much impressed by the psychology of it. But there is no psychology in it. That is not probably the way any young man would react to the ghost of his father, and there is no particular reason why they should. If it were the way a young man could react to the ghost of his father, 
then that should be something anybody in any village would know. They could talk about it, talk about it endlessly, but that would not make a masterpiece. And that brings us once more back to the subject of identity. At any moment when you are you, you are you without the memory of yourself. Because if you remember yourself while you are you, you're not for purpose of creating you. This is so important because it has so much to do with the question of a writer to his audience. One of the things that I discovered in lecturing was that gradually one ceased to hear what one said, one heard what the audience hears one say. That is the reason that oratory is practically never a masterpiece, very rarely and very rarely history, because history deals with people who are orators, who hear not what they are, not what they say, but what their audience hears them say. It's very interesting that letter writing has the same difficulty. The letter writes what the other person is to hear. And so entity does not exist. There are two present instead of one. And so once again, creation breaks down. I once wrote in writing, I write for myself and strangers, but that was merely a literary formalism for if I did write for myself and strangers, if I did, I would not really be writing, because already then identity would take the place of entity. It is all fully difficult. Action is direct and effective. But after all, action is necessary. And anything that is necessary has to do with human nature and not with the human mind. Therefore, a masterpiece has essentially not to be necessary. It has to be, that is it, it has to exist, but it does not have to be necessary. It is not in response to necessity as action is, because the minute it is necessary, it has in it no possibility of going on. To come back what a masterpiece has as its subject, in writing about painting, I said that a picture exists for and in itself, and the painter has to use objects, landscapes and people as a way, the only way, that he is able to get the picture to exist. That is everyone's trouble. And particularly the trouble just now when everyone who writes or paints has gotten to be abnormally conscious of the things he uses, that is the events, the people, the objects and the landscapes, and fundamentally the minute one is conscious, deeply conscious of these things as a subject, the interest in them does not exist. You can tell so well in the difficulty of writing novels or poetry these days. The tradition has always been that you may more or less describe the things that happen, you imagine them of course, but you more or less describe the things that happen. But nowadays, everybody all day long knows what is happening. And so what is happening is not really interesting. One knows it by radios, cinemas, newspapers, biographies, autobiographies, until what is happening does not really thrill anyone. It excites them a little, but does not really thrill them. The painter can no longer say that what he does is as the world looks to him because he cannot look at the world anymore. It has been photographed too much. And he has to say that he does something else. In former times, a painter said the painted what he saw. Of course, he didn't. But anyway, he could say it. Now, he does not want to say it because seeing it is not interesting. This is something to do with masterpieces and why there are so few of them, but not everything. So you see why talking has nothing to do with creation. Talking is really human nature as it is, and human nature has nothing to do with masterpieces. It is very curious, but the detective story, which is, you might say, the only really modern novel form 
that has come into existence gets rid of human nature by having the man dead to begin with. The hero is dead to begin with. And so you have, so to speak, got rid of the event before the book begins. There's another very curious thing about detective stories. In real life, people are interested in the crime more than they are in detection. It is the crime that is the thing. The shock. The thrill. The horror. But in the story, it is the detection that holds the interest. And that is natural enough. Because the necessity, as far as action is concerned, is the dead man. It is another function that has very little to do with human nature that makes the detection interesting. And so always it is true that the masterpiece has nothing to do with human nature or with identity. It has to do with the human mind and the entity that is with a thing in itself and not in relation. The moment it is in relation, it is come knowledge. And anybody can feel and know it. And it is not a masterpiece. At the same time, everyone in a curious way, sooner or later, does feel the reality of a masterpiece. The thing in itself, of which the human nature is only its clothing, does hold the attention. I've meditated a great deal about that. Another curious thing about masterpieces is... Nobody, when it's created, there is in the thing that we call the human mind something that makes it hold itself just the same. The manner and habits of Bible times or Greek or Chinese have nothing to do with us today. But the masterpieces exist just the same. And they do not exist because of their identity. That is what anyone remembering then remembered then. They do not exist by human nature because everybody always knows everything there is to know about human nature. They exist because they came to be as something that is in an end in itself. And in that respect, it is opposed to the business of living, which is relation and necessity. That is what a masterpiece is not although it may easily be what a masterpiece talks about. It is another one of the curious difficulties a masterpiece has that is to begin and end, because actually a masterpiece does not do that. It does not begin and end. If it did, it would be of necessity and in relation. And that is just what a masterpiece is not. Everybody worries about that just now. Everybody, that is what makes them talk about abstract and worry about punctuation and capitals and small letters and what a history is. Everybody worries about that, not because everybody knows what a masterpiece is, but because a certain number have found out what a masterpiece is not. Even the very masterpieces have always been very bothered about beginning and ending, because essentially, that is what a masterpiece is not. And yet, after all, like the subject of human nature, masterpieces have to use beginning and ending to become existing. Well, anyway, anybody who is trying to do anything today is desperately not having a beginning and an ending, but nevertheless, in some way, one does have to stop. I stop. I do not know whether I have made any of this very clear. It is clear, but unfortunately I've written it all down all summer and in spite of everything I'm now remembering and when you remember it is never clear. This is what makes secondary writing. It is remembering. It is very curious. You begin to write something and suddenly you remember something and if you continue to remember your writing gets very confused. If you do not remember while you're writing, it may seem confused to others, but actually it is clear, and eventually that clarity will be clear. That is what a masterpiece is. But if you remember while you're writing, it will seem clear at the time 
to anyone, but the clarity will go out of it. That is what a masterpiece is not. All this sounds awfully complicated, but it is not complicated at all. It is just what happens. Any of you, when you write, you try to remember what you are about to write, and you will see immediately how lifeless the writing becomes. That is why expository writing is so dull, because it is all remembered. That is why illustration is so dull, because you remember what somebody looked like, and you make your illustration look like it. The minute your memory functions, or you're doing anything, it may be very popular, but actually it is dull. And that is what a masterpiece is not. It may be unwelcome, but it is never dull. And so then, why are there so few of them? There are so few of them because mostly people live in identity and memory. That is when they think. They know they are they because their little dog knows them, and so they are not an entity, but an identity. And being so, memory is necessary to make them exist, and so they cannot create masterpieces. It has been said of geniuses that they are eternally young. I once said, what is the use of being a boy if you're going to grow up to be a man? The boy and the man have nothing to do with each other, except in respect to memory and identity. And if they have anything to do with each other in respect to memory and identity, then they will never produce a masterpiece. Do you, do you understand? Well, it really does not make much difference, because after all, masterpieces are what they are. And the reason why is that there are very few of them. The reason why is any of you try it, just not to be you are you because your little dog knows you. The second you are you, because your little dog knows you, you cannot make a masterpiece, and that is all of that. It is not extremely difficult not to have identity. But it is extremely difficult the knowing not having identity. One might say it is impossible, but that is not impossible. It is proved by the existence of masterpieces which are just that. They are knowing that there is no identity and producing while identity is not. That is what a masterpiece is. And so we do know what a masterpiece is and we also know why there are so few of them. Everything is against them. Everything that makes life go on makes identity, and everything that makes identity is of necessity a necessity. And the pleasures of life, as well as the necessities, help the necessity of identity. The pleasures that are soothing all have to do with identity. And the pleasures that are exciting all have to do with identity. And moreover, there is all the pride and vanity which play about masterpieces as well as about everyone, and these two all have to do with identity. And so, naturally, it is natural that there is more identity that one knows about than anything else one knows about, and the worst of all is that the only thing that anyone thinks about is identity. And thinking is something that does not so nearly need to be memory. And if it is, then of course it has nothing to do with a masterpiece. But what can a masterpiece be about? Mostly it is about identity. And all it does, and in being, so it must not have any. I was just thinking about anything, and in thinking about anything I saw something. In seeing that thing, shall we see it without it turning into identity? The moment is not a moment, and the sight is not the thing seen, and yet it is. Moments are not important because, of course, masterpieces have no more time than they have identity, although time, like identity, 
is what they concern themselves about, of course, that is what they do concern themselves about. Once, when one has said what one says, it is not true or too true. That is what is the trouble with time. That is what makes what women say truer than what men say. That is undoubtedly what is the trouble with time and always in its relation to masterpieces. I once said that nothing could bother me more than the way a thing goes dead once it has been said. And if it does, it is because of there being this trouble about time. Time is very important in connection with masterpieces. Of course it makes identity. Time does make identity. And identity does stop the creation of masterpieces. But time does something by itself to interfere with the creation of masterpieces as well as being part of what makes identity. If you do not keep remembering yourself, you have no identity. And if you have no time, you do not keep remembering yourself. And as you remember yourself, you do not create anybody can and thus know that. Think about how you create, if you do create, you do not remember yourself as you do create. And yet time and identity is what you tell about as you create. Only while you create, they do not exist. That is really what it is. And do you create? Yes, if you exist, but time and identity do not exist. We live in time and identity, but as we are, we do not know time and identity. Everybody knows that quite simply. It is so simple that anybody does know that. But to know what one knows is frightening to life. What one lives is soothing. And though everybody likes to be frightened, what they really have to have is soothing. And so the masterpieces are so few. Not the masterpieces themselves are frightening. No, of course not. Because if the creator of the masterpiece is frightened, then he does not exist without the memory of time and identity. And insofar as he is that, then he is frightened. And insofar as he is frightened, the masterpiece does not exist. It looks like it and it feels like it, but the memory of the fright destroys it as masterpiece. Robinson Crusoe and the footstep of the man Friday is one of the most perfect examples of the non-existence of time and identity what makes a masterpiece. I hope you do see what I mean, but anyway, everybody who knows about Robinson Crusoe and the footstep of Friday knows that that is true. There is no time and identity in the way it happened, and that is why there's no fright. And so there are very few masterpieces, of course, there are very few masterpieces, because to be able to know that is not to have identity and time, but not to mind talking, as if there was because it does not interfere with anything, and to go on being not as if there were no time and identity, but as if there were, and at the same time, existing without time and identity is so very simple that it is difficult to have many who are that. And of course, that is what a masterpiece is. And that is why there are so few of them. And anybody, really anybody, can know that. What is the use of being a boy if you're going to grow up to be a man? And what is the use? There's no use from the standpoint of masterpieces. There is no use. Anybody can really know that. There is really no use in being a boy if you're going to grow up to be a man, because then, man and boy, you can be certain that that is continuing. And the masterpiece does not continue. It is as it is, but it does not continue. It is very interesting that no one is content with being a man and boy, but he must also be a son and a father. And the fact that they all die has something to do with time, but it has nothing to do with a masterpiece. The word 
timely as used in our speech. It's very interesting. But you can, anyone can see that this has nothing to do with masterpieces. We all readily know that. The word timely tells that masterpieces have nothing to do with time. It's very interesting to have it be inside one that never, as you, know yourself, you know yourself, without looking and feeling, and looking and feeling, make it be, that you are someone you have seen. If you have seen anyone, you know them as you see them, whether it is yourself or any other one, and so the identity consists in recognition. And in recognizing, you lose identity. Because, after all, nobody looks as they look like. They do not look like that. We all know that of ourselves and of anyone. And therefore, in every way, it's a trouble. And so you write, anybody does write to confirm what anyone is. And the more one does, the more one looks like what one was. And in being so, identity is made. More so, and that identity is not what anyone can have as a thing to be, but as a thing to see. And it being a thing to see, no masterpiece can see what it can see. If it does, then it is timely. And as it is timely, it is no masterpiece. There are so many things to say. If there was no identity, no one could be governed. But everybody is governed by everybody, And that is why they make no masterpieces. And also why governing has nothing to do with masterpieces. It has completely to do with identity. But it has nothing to do with masterpieces. And that is why governing is occupying but not interesting. Governments are occupying but not interesting. Because masterpieces are exactly what they are not. There's another thing to say. When you're writing before there's an audience, anything written is as important as any other thing. And you cherish anything and everything that you have written after the audience begins, naturally they create something, that is they create you. And so not everything is so important. Something is more important than another thing, which was not true when you were you. That is when you are not you as your little dog knows you. And so there we are, and there's so much to say. But anyway, I do not say that there's no doubt that masterpieces are masterpieces in that way, and there are very few of them. <laughs>